Hello everyone, Master Zeon 101 here, and in this video I'll be talking about Two Shape and a little bit about its history and where it's come from and how it became such an integral part of Hops and how it's become the version that it is now. So it has a myriad of uses. One of my favorites is just being able to select everything and press QOT and then we use the space bar to just change it to a plane and just control scroll to choose the offset and then we can just press S50 and then use Alt M, apply a blank material. And then if we jump over to render mode, we see that I was able to just quickly set this up without even having to leave my render. In fact, I kind of lost my selection. I want to offset a little bit to get rid of any Z fighting. But just like that, you can find a creative use for using two shape for all sorts of things. So I show a lot of it where I'm just converting shapes into selections, but sometimes you need it for something as simple as just a ground plane. And that's where two shape can just come in handy when it comes to reducing the keystrokes of normally you having to place things in a very specific location in addition to just having a very specific shape in a very specific place in a very specific size. So I'm immensely proud of the work that's gone into it. This was initially provided to us by Link. Um, Loof and Bonjour07 have done an immense amount of work on it. And then Steve himself, ST3, has done an immense amount of work with um, improving the uh, final version by bringing it all together in this nice little system that's a lot more interactive and adjustable. And I can't wait to show you guys um, more about it. I was talking about it in a previous video and I hope you guys have already been playing with it. Our very own SC3 recently put out a coding training course on Gumroad that's available for purchase. Highly recommend it for anyone who's interested in getting started in the field of Python programming or wanting to find out more about getting started with add-ons. He's an immense asset to Team C and hard ops in general, and I hope you guys show him your support. Two Shape, or as it was originally called, Two Box, was initially uh, provided to us as a suggestion and script by someone we call Link. And the objective was simple. You would select something or a myriad of things and you would press Q O, well, Q O T, and it would convert that selection into a box. And, you know, it would come in handy for all sorts of things. Like sometimes you need a box that's absolutely the exact same size as something you're dealing with. So you can just continue expanding on it, you know, and you can just select it again and just QOT a second time and make another box and place it down here and select all this and QOT again. And, you know, the more you use it, the more addictive it begins to get. And so it originally was something that I originally was almost not even for except that you know the idea was so interesting that I was curious as to where it would go as far as its outcome and so the initial thing that uh, Link handed us was the idea of just providing a box that was the exact same size as the bounding box of a selection and from that it became so much more so I'll press control N and make a new file and under our opt-ins we just want to make sure that we're using a classic version for this and you know let's say that you're working in box cutter and cutting up a shape you know like old school just taking something to box city and then you know you you're beveling it and you know using your mod scroll to bring shapes in and make adjustments to ensure that the bevel works out as well as putting a way to normal on to get the shading just right but let's say you wanted a shape that encompassed this shape well that's where QOT will come in and you just quickly insert a shape and you might notice a little wire fade that's actually one of the final things we added to the classic version before we moved on to the next version and there's a lot that you can actually do with it through the F9 and F9 is a major component of Blender in general you'll find yourself pressing F9 a lot just to bring up um, operators and adjust their operator settings after the fact but the thing is is that the moment you click those settings go away and you press F9 and oh it looks like I'm still able to because I haven't done anything yet but sometimes you don't get so lucky and as you can see there's a lot of options with it just for a cube so another way of showing this in action is we'll just delete this shape and we'll go into hops tool and just bring up a hops cube and by bringing up this hops cube we're just playing with our bevels and let's say we wanted to two shape this object. We could press Q O T and by using the F nine, we can also choose to copy the first bevel. 
And right now you see that it copied it on a vertex level, but we can also choose angle only uh, in order to filter it. I'm not sure why it actually copied the um, vertex, uh, why it copied it like that. It should have actually copied it like, where is it at? It's been so long since I've been in the bevel settings that, here we go, only vertices. So now we actually have our cube that has the same bevel amount as the area around it. And, um, or actually the first bevel level, which is this one, the primary bevel. And this could come in handy for things like, let's say I wanted to um, put a dome around this by shift clicking blank material to just put like a sphere around it. But so I have something that actually conforms to the first bevel. And so we did get a little bit creative with two shape in its initial version. However, there's a lot more to it. Uh, I, I keep talking about two box and two shape, but two shape is actually what two boxy ended up evolving into and always wanted it to be something a little more interactive. So if we press QOT again, we could once again transfer it into a, being a box. But if we use the drop down, we can actually see that we can also make a plane. And notice that every time you scroll, it actually shows this nice little wireframe, which I just thought was a nice little touch. We got a little crazy with it and added it everywhere, but I'll be talking more about that later. But the interesting thing about plane is that you're able to just quickly just add a plane at the bottom of something and then just press S50, scale it up, add a blank material to that, add a blank material to this, press Alt V, B, put some lights in, and bada bing, bada boom, you're in the render and you're good to go. So there's not really a whole lot to it, but plane comes in handy for a plethora of things. We'll use it again, QOT, and we'll just use the um, F9 and just scroll it and bring it up. And you know, don't dwell on anything that I'm showing at this moment because this is the previous version of Two Shapes. So there's really not a whole lot to it, but just to give a little bit of concept, being a little bit of concept context of why um, this actually exists and why it has all these options and for what reason, this is it that I'm showing you at this time. So we press control and make a new file. There's a lot of additional options that you can do with this as well. I'll press one and look at this from the front. And before the end, we did quite a few experimentations with two shape. And because of the fact that not a lot of people were actually using this, we took that as an opportunity to, you know, really expand in this department. And eventually it's, it got to the point that we needed to just take it further. So you see that I cut this cube up and then I've mirrored it to the other side. And so I'll press QOT, and instead of using a cube, we'll actually change this to be a convex hull. The thing about a convex hull is it's basically the type of shape that would be created around this if it was like a physics simulation. And while it's a very simplistic shape, it comes in handy for all sorts of things, but I love getting it and just cleaning it up a little bit and then you know Alt-S pushing it out and just using it to build a shell and then cutting it away. But that isn't the point that we're talking about here. If we press QOT, we can press F9 and we can bring up DCAP. DCAP was one of my favorite classics. And the thing about DCAP was you could use this to, first of all, hide the original shape and you would turn off fill and you would change the fill and then you would change the axis. And notice all the steps that I'm having to perform here. And then I'm able to drag the thickness and I have to hold shift while I drag this because it's a parameter, it'll go insane if you don't hold shift while you're dragging it. And we're just basically decapitating the shape. And if we wanted to, we could keep our caps on this if we needed to, if we were trying to create a watertight mesh. But the reason that we don't keep the caps is because we wanna keep the caps as an option here and make them array compatible. And by doing this, it will actually give these caps an offset just enough that if you were to take this object and array it and then go under your array settings where we have to actually use these settings you can choose the cap neg and you can choose the cap positive and basically you've created a array mesh that's going to be able to in fact we chose the wrong mesh there now you have a mesh that you know it's both watertight and can be used for infinity. And the point of about it being watertight is that if we just uh, turn off renderability, that just means that box cutter won't try to uh, change the modifier order. But we see that, you know, things are a little bit of a mess right here. And that's because we need to merge first, last, and then we cut it. 
and we see that now we're in business and we're able to cut this shape as if it's manifold but without merge it's going to just put the shapes next to each other and not merge the points together alternatively we could have had a weld in between to do this but i like to have the array do its job uh because you know merge has been there for years so i just am a big fan of using it so continuing on now you see me taking this shape and just cutting it. And the interesting thing about this is it's still, you know, dynamic and non-destructive and I could do a plethora of things to it. But if you recall the steps that I just did in order to create this shape involved me creating a decap shape with two shape, adding an array with array, and then having you manually add the caps. And, you know, with the new two shape and decap, that was one of the steps I definitely wanted to solve. And so, you know, I apologize for such a long history lesson on the origins of two shape, but I feel that these things are necessary in order to uh, truly explain where this tool has come and gone and to give credit where credit is due because there are so many parties involved with it, with the original idea being provided from Link based on a stack exchange answer to all the work that Loof and Bon Giorno has put into it to finally ST3 finally rewriting it. So if we press QOT again, the interesting thing about bisect um, or decap is that we can just keep using it. And so if we just turn off keep caps, we can just keep playing with our thickness and then we could choose keep caps. And here we are with our keep caps again. And the original shape is gone or at least it's hidden for the moment. So if I were to duplicate this up, we could take this and just go under array and we're just arraying again, and we're able to decap the decap. So there was a lot of flexibility that was able to be found with this. In fact, we need to probably cap the right piece. Unless it's just not gonna work. And that, that could very well be the case, but it looks like something when array or I forgot to F9 and choose the array compatible to make them array compatible. But as you can see, the steps to doing this were getting a little bit convoluted. So it wasn't becoming something that I was uh, particularly into. So without further ado, let's actually jump over to the um, latest version of Blender, which actually has the newer version of Two Shape. And when it comes to Two Shape, you can actually opt in and out using the opt-in panel, where you can choose to use the interactive version or the classic one if you so choose but now if we just um you know we'll uh, alt scroll and change our shape and just perform a few cuts and we press q o t we can now roll our wheel backwards and this is what decap has become so instead of it becoming an f9 thing where you have to click panels and press things to pop things up we're able to just hold control and offset and just adjust things on the fly. So it was something that was definitely intended to be a modal and be a lot more interactive. You can press F to fill your caps. And then when you just click, it's the shape is brought back, but your selection is actually the new shape, which is always crucial to us. The selection of the shape is always very important. So, and we could take this, press QOT, roll the wheel backwards, decap this, you know, change the axis by just pressing X press F and we've decapped that and just grabbed a little piece of it. And you can just do this all day and just scroll through all the different shape types. So you might notice that circle and or sphere and cylinder are a little bit smaller in some cases. And that's because of the equalized parameter being on by default in order to ensure that every shape comes out to be a perfect cylinder or a perfect sphere rather than becoming um, you know something like that you can always press e to turn it off if you just want a sphere to fit the shape but you know when it comes to explaining this thing it, it gets a little complicated because you can use it in so many interesting and creative cases for example i have all these shapes on my screen right i can move these over i just press q o uh q o t and i have the shape and then i just bevel that shape and press alt m and shift click and now all these objects are under glass there is a phase I had where I was just putting every object under glass for some reason. So there are some optimizations and behavioral changes made to to shape in order to just make it better at encompassing objects and putting them behind glass and nice looking glass at that. But there's so much that you're able to get out of this tool whenever you 
um, begin to use it. And I keep introducing it through its hotkey of QOT because that really is the best way to get introduced to it. Once you're brought into it, it'll start you off with box. But the, th the interesting thing about it compared to the previous version is you can offset it by control scrolling. So let's say you want a box on the back of this box. Easy breezy, just control scroll, get the box exactly what you want, click to apply, and that box is now selected. And you can press S and Y in order to scale it in on the particular axis. In fact, let's get real creative with it. We'll go in edit mode select these four edges, press Q, we'll mark them, and then we'll go under bevel, but we'll press L in order to bevel them specifically based on what we have marked. And just like that, we're able to begin working on our shape. And then we could just press Q, O, T again. And we were just talking about box and it would be a shame for me to insert box again. So an, an interesting but debatable thing that we're working on inside of Hops is something called the flow system. So if you press space bar, you'll get a menu where you can actually choose what type of shape you can deal with. And we're torn between the hotkey being spacebar or the hotkey being tab. Spacebar has been quite optimal with apply. However, we have a contingency of users who have shown that it's quite interesting to have uh, spacebar be more interesting things rather than just simply apply since clicking and pressing enter does that. But let's change this over to decap or not decap. We wanna change this over to convex. And convex is an interesting shape, like I was saying, it's basically the shape you would get if you were creating a simulation. And so this is a test that I've done several times, so it's something that I'm pretty familiar with. And you can see that as a result of this convex shape we created, we have some sort of interior face. And I just wanted to point out that these sort of things can happen whenever you create a convex across multiple shapes. Sometimes you have to get in there and just make sure that there's nothing wacky happening with your shape. And so while the shape does look a little bit odd and almost not useful, we can still get our worth out of it. And the first thing is I wanna right click and just merge any vertices that are here. And we will just select this face and we'll just shift click mark in order to go into the edit multi-tool. And we'll just press B in order to bevel and then just space bar to cancel. And we'll just grab this loop, slide it all the way in and then we'll just slide it back. And we'll just uh, control shift tab and change our snap mode to vertex, just press G, Y, and just snap it perfectly there. And then just press um, Q and we'll go to clean mesh. And now the mesh is perfectly clean, but something about these faces just disturbs me. Aha, uh -huh. you know, sometimes there's spooky ghosts hitting in your geometry. So never doubt yourself guys. So how would you solve something like this? Every now and then I do like to uh, talk about just the basics of modeling. For me personally, I solve it by just choosing subdivide and then using control shift B in order to use a bevel to space it. And we could just take this point and merge it here. And we take this point and merge it here. There's not even a reason to do all this duplicate work when we could press alt X and just symmetry mirror this thing just like that and then fill the face in. And so now we actually have a manifold mesh that's capable of a bevel and progression. We don't want to have those double faces. They'll haunt us in the render. So I just want to show that convex hole can sometimes be a little bit of a strange shape, but I've been able to use it to some rather interesting results. For example, um, using it on sculpts in order to turn them into base meshes. But that's something that we'll um, have to talk about someday. So we'll just move this over on the Y axis and we'll just snap it using vertex snapping here. And we could just select all of this and press QOT again to go into our shape and just use our spacebar menu, which currently is spacebar. I'm just warning you because there's a chance that it could become exclusive to just tab because tab feels very natural with it. Uh, tab is also very popular in Blender for bringing up menus of types. So compared to spacebar, however, spacebar um, is a little more controversial. Uh, it plays the timeline, however, it also plays the, um, it also brings up the long menu if you set it up in your preferences, but you know, that's neither here nor there. So sorry, sorry to uh, continue on a rant. So with this shape, this cylinder we just added, we're just going to grab both of these sides and just bevel it. And then, you know, we'll just grab this edge, bevel it as well, put an edge in between, pull it inward and we're just getting random with it. We'll just 
you know, shift click EM macro, which now pushes out both ways to just push that geometry in. We can put a loop in the middle and snap our origin there and then symmetrize it over to the other side. And now this is ready for us to press QOT and roll backwards into bisect or decap. Uh, decap bisect it's almost interchangeable but bisect um, doesn't have as much uh, pop to it as decap so by pressing X I'm able to change the axis as you see and every time you press X it also adjusts the offset so if you end up in a situation where your offsets out of control you can always press X to change your axis this is part of some of the recent bug fixes that'll be part of the uh, next update that I mentioned at the very beginning it's always important for us to keep our tools at their best and I must add that a large degree of testing goes into these tools, but there's always things that slip through the cracks. In fact, I was pretty sure we uh, had some time to be afforded to us to work on other things before working on improving to shape. However, someone pointed out almost immediately that we forgot to allow segments and cylinder. So it caught us. And because of that, I figured we might as well deal with that. You know, can't can't just let an easy one get us. And I'm sitting here wondering why my mirror isn't showing anything. Okay, there it is. It is working. I was just being a numbskull. All right, but this shape, as you know, and I've drilled into your heads, is now extendable, which is is basically nothing, right? Um, unless we make like a really cool shape, right? Like if we were to turn this into some sort of hydraulic piston. And there I go, pressing Shift A to add a cube, which will be at my 3D cursor, where I will move it over like a barbarian. And we just compare that to QOT. And, you know, um, there are some things being talked about internally with the expanding on hops tool and what it's supposed to be. You know, I feel that it has a lot more growth in order to approach its true form. So we are setting it up for that um, Hops tool universe is coming soon, but continuing on, we'll just move the shape around and we will just turn off render sort so we can just take this and merge it with the union and we'll press alt X, but we'll press a in order to add a new mirror. And so now we have a mirror superseding this. We're kind of just working on a new stack at this point and we could just press alt W switch over to box cutter and just begin doing the Lord's work, which in this case, you know, maybe it's um, God's eighth day where he uh, chilled out cut boxes. So continuing on, we'll just press B, just bevel, you know, maybe grab this center point at the back. And I believe that I'm still using the um, exact system, so that's why it's getting a little bit slow. We can press uh, Shift T to begin tapering. And we'll just press spacebar to apply. And while it is a little bit slow, I just feel like I just soldier through it. But I probably should ensure that the bull ends that we're setting up are using fast. And here we go, hops is the culprit. We could actually just flip that over using the hop switch of just making everything fast. And then we notice that the next cut is fast as heck, the way things are supposed to be. In fact, we'll shift that to live, grab this side and do a reverse bevel and then mirror this to the other side. So now we have a more interesting shape than just this. So if we press QOT, we can roll the wheel back, which I wanted to specifically have in this. And notice that, you know, even when you bisect it sideways, you can get some really interesting shapes here. Like I see that just by filling the face, I could probably just get some sort of crazy spaceship or something, but remaining focused, we will press X and change our axis to be near the middle. And this is where control to offset comes in. And it's very nice to just be able to see this visual. Another touch that ST3 took on this that I felt was a great deal special to me is whenever you press C to keep caps, notice that you are able to see the line work for where the uh, shape would be filled in because visually you would actually have no idea what's happening at this point. So we found it important to try to convey to users exactly what's going on at this stage. So whenever you click, you have selected the new shape. You can just quickly move it over. You know, we might add a system to move it over after the fact, but if we press Alt W and switch over to hops tool, when we hold control, we have this dot 
and we just drag it and we're able to extend this shape and that's really all there is to it and I plan to really put this to work uh, in the near future on some robots but in the meantime I just want to get you know all the tools in working order for you know the work that is to come and we're just kind of working on this you know long space colony at this point so we select everything press QOT again and you know let's talk about convex again let's see what we get with it and convex looks crazy but the interesting thing about it is you can hold control and roll the wheel to offset it so you can actually get an offset result but if we look at this we see that well as of the latest update we now clean convex hole meshes normally they come out a little bit messier but we felt that using clean mesh would probably get you a little bit more sane of a result but this shape actually has its own uh, interest going on in fact we do a auto smooth scroll and we scroll it just right and we get some shapes that um, really catch our interest you know maybe we can just mark those two sharp and let's see what we can do with this if the shape is manifold we should be able to just draw a circle and just laser cut all the way through it without issue And if we look at this we see that we're basically looking out the other side in fact I will um, look at this frontally and using NGON, we'll just perform a few cuts just to um, really get the party started. Notice at the top that I'm using um, 717 underscore 5, our latest release. And we're just goofing off at this point. But I just want to really uh, go into emphasis on the amount of work that's been done with 2Shape because, um, you know, it can be a little difficult to come up with reasons and ways that you can use this in your workflow and how it could best work for you but I just want you to know that we've um, definitely done everything we could to basically give it the most utility possible as of this moment to allow it to get the most maximum utility and use to you but as always there is additional work to be done in fact you know once you begin to calibrate to it that's when um, you may want us to begin making changes with it again, but I did want to do a special video just talking about it because just so much work uh, went into it. And I'm not even talking about as of this latest version, I'm talking about everything up to this particular version. Um, being able to lock things and decap them is something that I was wanting to do forever and I wasn't sure if it was ever going to just be a thing inside of hops cutter so it was something that you know remained on the whiteboard as a topic of discussion which would come up every now and then as like you know um, it, it, it would be nice if we could do that it would really help the workflow to be able to um, iterate objects endlessly so now I'm happy to announce that you know through teamwork and that was a glitch right there but yeah through teamwork it was able to uh, finally come together in the end so I congratulate everyone involved but definitely want to give a special shout out to SC3 for all the tireless effort that he put into consolidating it into the end and just all the drawing involved in fact um, you know everybody whenever they receive a task of improving something uh, their first thought is all right I'm just gonna change that version I'm like oh come on is there any way we can um keep that older version and with two shape i definitely wanted to keep the classic version which i always re refer to as the mechanical version internally because there was um always something a little more that i felt was able to be done with it and the version that was made was really just a means to an end to get the idea across and get people started with it and the version that you're looking at now is definitely the version that we intended to put out from the get-go. So I'm just working on just shapes and just talking to you about two shape, which is usually my favorite way to hit my stride and find randomness. You know, you just are working and using these things. And, you know, just a quick trip to Box City should give you some uh, ideas on ways you can uh, quickly, you know, improve upon this thing or uh, implement it into your workflow. You know, when I first saw it, I was like, you know, that's actually very cool. And it required no time at all for me to um, 
begin thinking in terms of boxes. Here we are seeing what happens whenever you don't bypass the sort for array. So we could actually uh, deal with this all together and for good by just turning off array sort. It just means that whenever you cut, array won't be sorted. So now we're able to just cut out the other side and we're just good to go. But just like that, you're able to just make a shape, decap it, turn it into something else and just begin cutting on it. You know, I'm looking at this shape, I'm looking at the shape next to him like, oh, oh yeah, it was that shape, wasn't it? But that's really all there is to it. So I'm hoping that, you know, you get in there and you get your worth out of it because, you know, at, near the end of this thing, I was like, wow, this version is crazy. You know, I'm so excited. I was so excited about the, um, finale that I didn't even allow Link to experience it like a user. I had to write him and say, hey man, you got to try this version of Shape because, you know, this is your suggestion and now the final version of it is just, just too much, just too much. And, you know, with every concept, I always want to somehow get it into box cutter. And so I do look forward to the idea of improving the make solution inside of box cutter using the two shape system, which would basically mean that box cutter would have a way of having shapes originate based on the bounding shape of the shape that you actually begin with. And I'm totally working on the wrong axis. So I will just mirror that, you know, anytime there's a mistake, just quickly just get back in business and we see that none of our modifiers had to be toggled off so the cool thing is that if I do a modifier scroll we can see this thing's humble beginnings of just being a little slice and then by the end king of a kingdom just a robin king of just boolean meshes right and compared to all this other stuff we made these these objects don't matter to us but this object people in other villages will talk about it but before I wrap this up I do want to explain that, you know, um, even though my version isn't indicating it at this time because I'm using a, a pre-release version, if we go to the about right now, it says that I'm using underscore 22. In order to be able to adjust the segments on spheres and cylinders on the fly, you will need underscore 23. So I will be putting that version out at the end of this video. So to show that in action, we'll just use space bar, change it to a cylinder, press S, and then we can just scroll the cylinders in. So it's not the biggest thing in the world to me because me personally, I always add a cylinder, sharpen it, add a level of subdivision, and then bevel it. I don't know why I do that. It ends up putting a um, bit of extra geo here, but you know nothing a little decimate can't fix. And then you can always uh, slap a bevel on top of that. And what's interesting is this shape that we just created with subdivision bevel, decimate, and another bevel. We could just QOT, roll the wheel backwards, and just drag that backwards, and press C to keep our caps. And we assume that if you keep your caps, you definitely want to uh, make it array compatible. So I did do a bit of a pass with uh, Steve on it where um, we went over how we wanted to reduce the amount of clicks that were being involved with this. So, and that's always crucial to me. Keep in mind, you know, our goal is to reduce the amount of clicks. So, you know, people are like, why are there so many updates? It's like, well, I mean, how many clicks was it before? Was it a lot? Because that, that probably explains us changing it. Sorry to say, um, if it's if it's a million clicks, uh, no love lost because our goal is definitely to remove clicks. So I'm taking this in local mode and we're just gonna put a circle here and we'll just scale this up and I'm just gonna select both of these and use curve to form and we see that it just didn't work out and it's because curve is a difficult one to tame you know it, it's pretty understandable and linear really your origins are in the same place your rotations are applied your rotations are absolutely one to one then your object's going to go just like you're seeing here it's going to deform nicely a longer curve but in order to automate it you know i need it to be so so predictable but this is the next arc of two shape for me is to be able to have shapes be decapitated, lopped, made array compatible, and then made to be able to be curved across each other and just streamed down. So 
don't be surprised when you see it coming. You know, I, I hope that a lot of the stuff that I end up doing in these tools, I always mention it in videos. I mean, if I complain about something, which I put out like a uh, five hour video where I felt I complained a lot. So as a result of a lot of complaining, a lot of work was done. And so with that, I'm happy to announce to shape V2.